Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome to Plane Time RQ7 Shadow Edition. The Dancing Wings Hobby RQ7 Shadow full kit. Uh, and this is basically the physically completed plane. Everything is assembled, everything is fully functional. If it wasn't for the covering, this plane could actually fly. I have everything wired up and everything connected up. Stay tuned, it's really, really interesting either way. So as you can see, the plane is fully assembled. Now, the wings slide on or slide off. And the way that that works, if you have a look in here, is that there are four, one on each side, thumb screws. And those just screw out and then the wings slide off. And as you can see, there is a, a rear spar aluminum, aluminum, and a front spar. And they basically, the wings just slide on there. The biggest trick, of course, is to get the wiring uh, in, which is why I haven't done it for now. What has to happen next is to get the plane fully together is that the booms have to go on. And here you have. So here we have the two tail booms. Now they won't eventually be separate pieces. They will actually be in one piece like that. But for now I'm leaving separate pieces until I cover it. But what it means is in order to get the tail booms or the, the plane fully assembled, and this will happen this will happen later on after the plane is like complete. The tail booms are meant to be removable so that the plane can be assembled for trans disassembled for transport and assembled for flight. So the tail boom, this one will be the right tail boom, needs to slide on, needs to slide on here. And as you can see, it needs to slide in through there. And then this clip needs to clip in and these, uh, the wires for the equipment, including the servo and the, uh, the lighting on the rear of the tail boom need to be clipped together. So basically what has to happen now is I clip this together, slide this in and do the same thing with the other tail boom and then we'll have the plane fully assembled. So that clips on there. That's the lights wires. The, uh, the light wire didn't come with the plane. Um, I added that. This is the servo wire for the rudder That comes with the plane and that needs to clip together in there. And so now what has to happen is as I slide the boom in, these need to go inside the tail like that, which is why I've used the straw to hold them together. Keep them straight and that basically slides in. Now the, the interesting thing about this is that that is sticking, oh no, that's working, is that this has to be possible once the sheeting is on, and that'll be interesting fun. All right, so that slides in here. And there we go. So that's one. That was a lot easier the second time around. This connection is for the camera. I've added it. I'm going to be putting a Runcam Thumb Pro on the tail. So I need a power to run out to the tail boom for the camera. That's what that is. And then the servo for the left rudder clips on there like that. And then the same thing, the boom needs to slide in through the slot. And then this needs to push through here like that. And there we have it. So that's how the tail boom will go. There's one other piece. Because guess what? We're going to put the propeller on just to see how it looks. This is the wooden propeller. It's a 15 by 7. And it's a regular, um, not a pusher prop. And that, what that means is that with the motor reversed like this, that the motor has to run in reverse in order for the propeller to push in the right direction. And so, of course, that's easy enough to do. 
but the propeller needs to be positioned so it's pushing forwards and that will go on there like that. Finger tight's good enough because it's really just for demo purposes. And then I'm going to turn it on. Wow, so that's the plane. My goodness, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So the ailerons, it turns out, are ailerons and flaps. And as you can see, the aileron piece at the back of the plane or at the outside of the wing is actually a little shorter than the inside section, which is technically the flaps. What's also interesting, and if you can look in here a little closer, you can see here there's two different kinds of hinges. These hinges on the flaps or the inside control surfaces are uh, full hinges with pins. The flaps on the hinges on the outside though are mylar hinges. Not sure if I understand why the difference. Uh, it's fairly clear that, uh, that they want stronger hinges on the inside rather than the outside, although these are the ailerons, so I think they're gonna be doing more work. But we'll go with it as designed. As you can see, the servos bolt in here inside what I've done is I've just used a little bit of it's one of my favorite ways of doing wiring is to clip the wire the servo wires in with cable ties so and and I'm pre-installing the wiring as you can see because I'm sure that Trying to feed those wires in after it's going to be covered will be a nightmare. As you can see, some of the gaps where the wires need to feed through are pretty small. I think it'd be, yeah, it would be a nightmare to try and feed these in. So what I've basically done is run the provided extension wires. These are all provided in the kit through to where they need to be connected to the servos and then cable ties them in so that they won't get lost. And these can be then unscrewed covering done and then I can bolt those back in later. Also, you can see that I've put in navigation lights. So I basically just run the wire for the navigation lights through here and these pop out the front of the, the wing here and they're connected to the, the, uh, the light controller here. Oh, I didn't show you the lights. Let's do the lights. Ready? There we go. We've got lights. We've got lights. We should, if all goes well. Oh, we even have lights on the tail. On the tail boom here. So that's going to be a flashing. I haven't, uh, I haven't glued the light onto here because, again, I want to get the covering on first. I just I wanted to get the wiring through, but that will basically be glued on the back here so it will face back with a blinking or flashing light. As you can see I've got light at the front and I've got green on the right hand wing. Over here. And I can turn it on or off 
with a switch off on so that all works nicely just to mention but it looks like there's a small gap in here where the spar doesn't quite go into the the slot into this uh, rib here and it's not that I've got it short on this end and too long on that end because it actually seems to be a little short on both ends so I think I'm just going to put a plug into the end of the spar here so that it basically just that extra little bit of strength of having the spar I mean the spar is braced against these carbon fiber rods three of them that that slot firmly into this this uh, rib here but you know, I think it would just add a little bit more strength to uh, for the wing moment to uh, add a plug at the end of that so I'll do that um, and apart from that you know this plane this really big plane has been a pleasure to put together the the pieces fit together really nicely maybe because it's big uh, and easier to work with but I also think because it's actually version 2 and some of the um, as some design decisions have been improved the, the plane itself fits together and slots together very very nicely and simply so such a large plane like this came together for me in maybe half the time of the Dancing Wings Fokker DR1 that I built. Not to say that wasn't fun, because that was an awful lot of fun to build, but this was this has been fun to build and really nice that it comes together so nicely. And my goodness, doesn't it look awesome? So uh, that's, okay, that's the assembly of the plane. Now let's have a quick look at the electronics. So for the electronics, there's a fairly straightforward Ardu Pilot flight controller build. So for anybody just putting a, a, a receiver uh, into control the plane, you certainly could fly it like that. But what I have here is a Make Fly Easy Pix Pilot 3. And this is the, this is an M8N uh, GPS that comes with the Pix Pilot 3 as a package. Here we have the safety switch where I can turn the uh, servos and everything on or off. Right here I have a Crossfire Nano receiver with wires for Crossfire, radio control and Mavlink and that's the, uh, that's the antenna for that. I have a 6S, uh, it's only a single 4000 milliamp hour battery uh, success but I plan to put two of them in and you know what it'd be interesting to see how the center of gravity works with the battery right now there if, if you can look in here you can see that all of the all of the servo connections are here so I have nose wheel steering times one radivator times two I have flaps times two ailerons times two motor times one and controller for the, the light switch. This is the stock 80, uh, 80 amp ESC that comes with the kit. And here we have the MC4220 410 KV motor. Oh, and I do want to point out the screws here, uh, the mounting screws for the motor. So this basically just comes with four wood screws to mount the motor to the firewall. The firewall is very solid. It's it's three solid pieces of plywood that have been bolted together, but still just three, four wood screws. I'm uh, thinking that I'm going to put bolts in there instead of those screws, but it should be fine, but I don't know. Safety is better. So I think there we go. That's the electronics. That's the plane. And next step, something I haven't done for 40 some years, is iron on covering for this plane. And let's see how, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I have done it before, a long time ago. I'm gonna do it again. RQ7 Shadow, Tim the Plane Man, over and out.